She's raging. Oh. Whoa. The North Maine Woods region of Maine encompasses 3.5 million acres of land. It's teeming with every form of outdoors adventure, and one can find natural beauty in raw form here. Join me as I spend five days exploring a few of its waterways, learning the lessons Mother Nature had to offer. Welcome to another adventure, folks. Today's adventure brings us back to the North Main Woods. I'm here with my buddy Justin from It's Good in the Woods. We are on Ambajigis, Ambajigis Lake. And we're hoping to do a nice loop through the Debskeneg Lakes. This will be my first time out here or first time back to this area since my golden road trip with my buddy Mike. Um, so I'm pretty excited about it. We're on the water. Couldn't be Couldn't be happier with the conditions at the moment. It's so beautiful out. It's incredible Which is unusual for afternoon paddling on a lake if you paddle on lakes in the afternoon You know that it's generally windy in the afternoon and a lot slower going so We're super excited to be here. We just got here a couple hours ago and we're doing a little bit of fishing, but paddling our way to our first campsite, which I think is Moose Island or Big Moose Island, one of the two. But I'll clarify when I get there. But before I cut to the action, do me a favor and hit that like button and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Set the notifications to all so when I post future trip videos, you get notified and you can check them out. Now, back to the action. Thank you. All right, folks, we made it. I believe we're on Big Moose Island. Uh, Justin said it's Big Moose. We're gonna go with Big Moose. But I'll double check the map. I'll show you on the map where we're at in relation to where we started and give you some idea what's going on here. We are on the island. It's a fantastic view. We have water all around us. A killer view of Mount Katahdin, a nice sandy beach. Pretty decent area here, a good fire pit. There's a little bench here. There's my gear bomb. Today's day one. We're going to be doing, in theory, if the weather allows us, we're going to be doing four nights, I think. So today's a Monday. We'll be here tonight, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, and paddle out of here on Friday. We've got portages. We've got We've got some river action that we're gonna do on the way out of here. We have to hit the west branch of the Penobscot. Hopefully the weather allows us to complete this Deb Skin Egg Loop here in the North Main Woods. So today's day one. I drove six hours to get here, loaded up the boats, paddled across Ambajigis, Ambajigis. I don't know why I struggle with that so badly, but I do. Paddled across a good ways across that lake, and here we are. So probably won't do a whole lot of filming tonight but I'll show you the digs once everything's set up for now I'm gonna hydrate we packed light for this trip you can't really tell but this is a lot less stuff for four nights than I normally take but I brought this little throwaway cooler this is high-speed low drag way to transport cold beer for one night so ice in the ziploc bag 
We'll drink these beers tonight, crush the cans, stick them in the Ziploc bag, into the Bills bag they go, and out they go with us. for this adventure was of course fun, but I wanted to push myself beyond my normal abilities and experiences. This included my filmography. did the absolute best I could to pull out all the stops and make this trip different in every way. From the way that I packed my gear, to the way I carried my gear, to the things I did, to the way I filmed, you name it. I wanted this adventure to be pretty epic, and I am pretty sure that it was. I hope you'd agree. Chose my REI SL2 it's quarter dome. I believe it's a quarter dome. It's the lightest shelter I had. That's why. And it's got some space in it. So this is the new flex tail pillow I showed you folks in my last video. This is the Neo Air Thermarest Neo Air X Therm. So it's quite a bit higher than I need R value wise for this trip. But it was also, like I said, the lightest piece of gear that I had in that slot um, but this is REI's 30 degree magma top quilt so if I get too roasty toasty because of the pad I can just throw this off so she'll work out pretty good I did bring an extra pillow because I'm getting old and my knees started to hurt when I sleep on my side so that'll go between my knees uh, clothing bag that's the uh, the oh shit kit electronics bag and my hygiene bag Everything's tucked in here. And then in the other vestibule, I've got my paddling boots there, my NRS boundary boots, and my PFD. Bushcraft. All right, everybody, on today's episode of JP Sneaky Beverages, we have some fantastic dehydrated orange peels. 
I shouldn't say orange peels. It is the entire orange. They're quite crunchy and they make a yummy snack with a little bit of chocolate. But I didn't dip them in the chocolate because I am going to use them for a beverage. So we're going to put a couple in there. And add a tiny bit of water. I dehydrated these myself at the house. Just a tiny bit of water in there. Let them start to rehydrate a bit. And then we're going to come back and visit them here in a couple of minutes. Now the secret ingredient to tonight's JP Sneaky Drinks. This is Captain Morgan's private stock. It's quite yummy. Should pair nicely with the orange. Why is the rum going? Kind of a lot of rum, so watch yourself. As part of my preparation for this trip, I made all of my stuff using dehydrating methods, if that made any sense. Because we were going to be doing some carries, and I was trying to lighten the load a bit so that they could be done in a single carry. Dehydrated all of my meals and prepared some things. These are veggie dumplings. They seem to have dehydrated pretty well. So we're gonna to try to rehydrate them and see how it goes for science. Oh yeah, it looks like dumplings to me. Did you weigh them? Nah. For dessert, I'm gonna have this artisan grilled cheese. Justin gifted me some crafty bread, ricotta cheese, spinach, sun-dried tomatoes, garlic, all sorts of good stuff. It's gonna be fantastic. Everybody. The night went well, slept pretty good. A little bit of a uh, little bit of discomfort and rolling around. I think I overinflated the sleeping pad, but um, for the most part it went well. Nice calm night. It was pretty sweet. Get up this morning, make some breakfast. Got some oatmeal and some dehydrated apples, I think. And more importantly, coffee. So let's get to it. Definitely not a bad place to wake up. This is right outside my door. There was a tremendous amount of owl activity last night. I've never heard so many barred owls in my life at one at one time. They were all across the lake just hooting and hollering and having a good old time. And then something else I can't identify. I was making a whole lot of noise last night. But lots of critters are busy right now. It's nice and calm, so we're probably going to get smashed by mosquitoes. But other than that... Couldn't ask for better weather.
coffee. Dehydrated apples, maple and brown sugar oatmeal, Let's let that soak up, rehydrate. If you folks remember the old filter hack but I made a funnel out of a smart water bottle and you can buy this adapter here to hang filter your water so it makes it a lot easier to fill this bag pretty quickly also I keep this in the canoe so it doubles as a bale if I need to so I used it on a Connecticut River trip with Justin it worked fantastic and so uh, you know I'll just link that video here and you check it out worked awesome though On to the next one. Here we go, everybody, leaving Moose Island. It's quite windy. We're in a sheltered little cove right now. And um, we're just gonna kind of play the point to point game, kind of uh, island hop, but you know, without the islands. It's pretty windy. It's a lot windier than we'd like. And as soon as we cut this corner right here, it's gonna get a lot worse. But there you can see. We gotta make our way around this point, a couple miles of a paddle, and hopefully we don't go for a swim, so there won't be filming or fishing going on. So, wish me luck. Here we go. Yeah, I feel pretty good as long as I can keep the wind in my face yeah. and not on the side of the boat, it paddles really well. When it starts to catch me on the side a little bit, I don't like it at all. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I kind of picked a little slightly different line and tried to just kind of go for it. Pretty gnarly stuff. Pretty gnarly. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm pretty happy with this boat, folks. But we gotta trying to get around that corner just would have been a bad idea. I wish I could have got it on film. It's pretty much sitting stationary surfing on top of waves, which is pretty sketchy. So we're gonna take a break, I guess. We'll see what happens. 
assess the situation. So we pulled over because it was quite sketchy out there and you know, try to show you, but you're not gonna be able to see it. But how oh, you can't see it at all. Probably, I would say, what would you say? Like maybe at least two feet, two foot waves, roughly. Yeah. About, hey. about yeah. two foot waves, a lot of white cappers and uh, the wind, the wind is ripping as soon as we try to get around the bend. So just hanging out, I guess. We'll see what happens, but update you soon. We're still pretty, still pretty windbound or windlocked, I guess you could say. So we're gonna go ahead and make some lunch now. Something easy peasy so we don't have to unpack stoves and everything. At least I'm not going to, so. I'll show you what we got here. Gourmet, gourmet stuff. Tortillas are a lifesaver. Take these everywhere, wilderness wise. You can eat them by themselves if you have to. You can put tuna in them, you can put peanut butter in them, you name it. In this case, we've got some sweet and spicy star kissed. These things are fantastic for a hasty lunch that you don't have to cook. And I brought along this green jalapeno paste. It's pretty good. Throw some of that on there. The science. It doesn't look very appetizing, but gets the job done. It's pretty gross actually. Everybody, we're gonna give it a go. Seems like we have a little bit of a break in the weather, and uh, it's still a bit windy. Definitely not like it was yesterday. But there aren't many times where you come out here, and it was like it was yesterday. That was uh, that was a gift, and I just wish we could get that gift again. <laughs> so here we go, taking it one step at a time. today. <laughs> Trying to get around that corner to the next camp site. But it's uh, quite windy and we can't get around that point. We don't feel like it safely. So we're heading back to Moose and we're going to wait it out there so we'll see what happens. But um, it's a little bit, a little bit wavy and we just weren't cool with had going on even right now not cool not cool at all just not worth it good two foot waves probably hard to see on the camera so we're gonna head back to moose hang out see what happens
Pretty sure we made the right call. 100%. <laughs> it was pretty gnarly on the paddle back, man. I used expletives a number of times. Well, like I said, folks, here we are, back at Moose. Dry. Yeah, dry, mostly. It's, I don't know if you can pick it up in the video, but probably not. I, you know, I always say that, and you never can. The winds are, are real bad, waves are real bad. I mean, it just was not a, not a good thing. So collectively we were said, you know, head back to Moose. So unfortunately not a super eventful day in terms of documenting this loop. So right now, what the plan or hope is we can wait out this wind and I think hit the water early in the morning if that's what we got to do in order to get it done. So we'll see what happens. And, uh, you know, we didn't get dead. So that's important. That's super important. Not getting dead. Hopefully you can hear the wind, but... Yeah. So, alrighty. See you in a few. dinner time folks and as I said I dehydrated a lot of my food for this trip to try to save some weight so I think what I'm gonna do is I have some uh, sirloin that I dehydrated and I have some a pasta and sauce with peas so penne to be specific so I think I'm gonna rehydrate some of this with some sirloin and have me a nice meal tonight, so let's get started. All right, everybody, third time's the charm. Leaving, well, it's our third attempt to get around the point, not the third time leaving Moose Island. But leaving Moose Island, and we're trying to make it around the bend again so we can get to the portage, which is about a mile long. So hopefully we can still make the loop happen, but the window is closing a little bit because of time. Wind was so bad yesterday, but it's beautiful out this morning when the water is nice and calm. But we have some rain coming today, so we still have some challenges ahead of us. A lot of work, a lot of work ahead of us, and more inclement weather on its way. So we've got to, you know, get on the gas pedal here this morning. So. And do a ton of filming but hopefully we get into some fish today i haven't caught fish yet which is a bummer um, but yesterday was more about not falling in the water because this water is very cold very cold so that's it hitting the road paddling i'll give you an update when we make it to the portage
right, everybody, here we go. Ready for the one mile portage. Here's the boat set up real quick, like everything's lashed in. The rubber twist ties, they're fantastic. There's my big old pack, ready to step off. Nose dribbles in full effect. This portage is about a mile into uh, third Deb's Keneg Lake. Let's go. This would be fun. Whose idea was this anyway? <laughs> yeah, little buddy. I'm not gonna mess with you. Pretty cool. It's kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Whew. It's a sign. Take a break. Tell you what, folks, it's a built character. About 80 pounds or so in, in total for like a mile. But we're here. Third Debskin Egg Lake, everybody. It's quite peaceful out here. Quite peaceful. It's nice. Whew. Snack time. On the water. Third, third Debskin Egg Lake. We're gonna scope out a campsite real quick, like, on this lake. Let's check it out. We don't really have plans to stay there. We're gonna see what it looks like, though, just for future reference and hopefully can press on and cruise into third, uh, sorry, second Devskinig Lake. That's the plan. Since we lost a day yesterday due to wind, kind of put us in a little bit of a pickle. So here we go. It's beautiful out here though. the portage sign from here. That was a heck of a paddle. Kind of just ripped out. Third Debskin Egg Lake. Just confused them. Just cut across it as quick as we can basically to keep on schedule because of yesterday's debacle with the wind. But here we are. So many rocks. <laughs> So here we are at the second Debs. Third Debs to second Debs, right? Yeah. Third Debs to second Debs portage. So it's like 0.3 miles we gotta do 
and this one's very different. It wasn't much to show you folks in the other one. It was basically just carrying my canoe down a road. It was that cool snapping turtle though. So, okay. But in here is very, very different. Quite the wilderness experience for sure. We did see some big fat moose tracks on that uh, last portage though. So that was pretty cool. But that's to prepare the boats, prepare launch, carry down this 0.3 mile trail. Chili covered dried mangoes, excellent canoe food. So our chocolate covered bananas. Mm. <laughs> Trails pretty cool. Be a little bit easier to enjoy the scenery without like 80 pounds of canoe and gear, but part of the experience, right? Pretty cool so far though. Buddy. Yeah, man. Ah. To the second death. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Let's get into some trout. Got a little put in here on second Debs and paddling across the water here. Very short paddle. It's a camp spot on the other side of the lake. That's where we're gonna camp out for the night. Whoa. Weather, some nasty weather supposed to roll in. Which is one of the reasons why we were kind of iffy on what we were going to do for the evening, but it worked out, so let's get to it.
on these topics. Speaking of my life, I don't know. Alright folks, the rain has started. This is a pretty incredible place to camp. We made great time getting here and um, Mother Nature held out just long enough so super thankful but I don't know if we can see the falls in here. Super cool. Falls in a river run right through here and we're camped out right here by 2nd Debskeneg Lake. Like I said, though, the rain started. We're going to try to get some firewood real quick. So I'll be back. Dinner this evening, folks. We're gonna do some dehydrated chicken. Uh, these are jerk chicken thighs. Came out pretty good. I'm super excited about it. So we're gonna get those going, and then I also have some nice rice pilaf to complement these. So we'll get those on the fire. And then we'll add the rice here in a minute. Chicken's been in there for a while now, so we're going to go ahead and add our rice peel off. Dehydrated this mixture. Just box store bought stuff. Dehydrate it and add one of these fancy desiccant, I think it's called, that's how you pronounce it, packs to it. Super helpful. Doesn't look like much, but it will. is served we can fogging up the lens jerk chicken rice peel off with mushrooms that I dehydrated pretty excited Hungary Hungary Well, good morning, everybody. This is day four. We are on second Debs. A little sprinkling this morning. Rained pretty good last night. Um, we got to start packing up. 
getting ready to hit, hit the road. Got a short paddle this morning, first thing. Fairly short paddle across second Debskin Egg Lake. And then we've got a chunky little portage, about 0.7 miles into first Debskin Egg Lake. And paddle and portage again. So, you know, that's the deal though. Ooh. A little stuffy this morning. Wicked headache. I've been battling a headache for like two days. It's so tough being out here doing these things and having a headache. But come out in nature and your body's not used to it. You get the sinus issues and stuff like that that are associated with it, I guess. I don't know. But here we go. Make some coffee. breakfast again I'm just gonna do some coffee and I'm gonna mix in one of these Car carnation instant breakfast packets I've seen me use them a few times now makes breakfast a lot easier on these trips um, so I'll just make a coffee pop one of these bad boys in and maybe snack on some granola or dried fruit or something because when you're doing a trip like this and you have a bunch of carries and you know you need to make some progress making a mess in the morning and making breakfast can be a little bit of a pain so just try to keep it simple you know so far it's been a pretty good system Nice caffeinated hot cocoa. Nine AM on the dot, folks, and we are leaving second. Skinneg Lake. For whatever reason, this morning, the anxiety is quite crippling for some reason. I always struggle with it a little bit, but this morning, man, I don't know what it is. Something feels a little off. You know, you get nervous about doing this sort of stuff on a regular basis, but. Every once in a while, you feel it at an elevated status. You know, when weather, bad weather is pending, you know, when you have rapids ahead of you or something, when you have all of those things, it gets pretty gnarly. It doesn't feel good, so. It's gray, we've got work to do today, so. Not painfully relaxing right now. But you're out here and it's beautiful. So you gotta just calm yourself and, and get get it done, you know? So here we go. We are trying to get it done. We got a little creek action going, huh? Very cool. Maybe that's where the trout is hiding. This is sweet. 
See, this is my jam right here. Almost to today's portage. This place is really cool. We are folks, the next portage. I think this one's what you said 0. 0.7 miles? Yeah. 0. 0.7 miles. So got us a little bit of work to do. And then we'll be in first Deb's Gnag Lake. There's the setup folks. It's a little bit better this time. Why is my carry yoke lashed? to the boat instead of being in the boat you say my seat height isn't low enough to allow for that big old boy so what I have to do is just carry it so it's kind of dead weight so there are a couple of things I do differently next time but everything's lashed in and ready to go and rests on top of my bills 110 um, bag so I just rest on there and then we're good to go but that's where we're headed 0.7 miles. Hops and easy. Here we go. So pretty in here. Are you behind me? Not as easy as it looks on video, is it? <laughs> well, I never knew, thought it was easy, man, for sure. For sure. Well, huh. first steps can egg lake. <laughs> oh, man, as far as I'm concerned, we just put in a shift. Oh, whoo, super pretty, though. So. I forgot I had this hoodie on. <laughs> Whoops, I'm like, why am I sweating so bad? Oh, that would be why. Oh, time to filter some water. All right, 
kids, here we go. First Debskeneg Lake. It's raining, but we're taking it because we'd rather get a little wet than get a little dead because of wind. So we're gonna make our way across First Debskeneg Lake and we'll have some fun stuff to deal with, rapids and such, but uh, should be interesting. So here we go. Quite pretty in here. It's awesome. I love it. Here we are folks, Omaha Beach, Omaha Beach. It's a little chilly, it's getting very windy. So we're gonna grab some lunch. Take a look at this view, man. It's never the same on camera, I know. But the cotton's in the clouds, it's fantastic. So we're gonna grab some lunch and come up with a plan. Whew. Pretty cool spot though. We're uh, leaving Omaha Beach now. A little chilly, cold on the hands. Definitely need to invest in some neoprene gloves or something. So we got rained on and it's good, a good bit windy now. And this is our last section of big water that we've got to do. So we'll try to knock this out. We've got some other obstacles to overcome, a couple of carries and stuff. Hopefully we can get to our intended target for the night. So we will uh, we'll see how it goes. Check out the end of you. Well, just to give everybody an update, uh, as you could probably tell from the last clip, I went for a swim again. So, not a good time, not a good time. So, um, we were coming down a little chute, all was well, and then it wasn't. I'm not really sure what happened. I have no idea. Play back the video on Justin's camera, and all I can see I should have reacted and used the paddle as a brace. Should have been pretty easy to do, and I just didn't. I don't know why. But I guess that's, you know, lesson learned. Another lesson learned. So uh, we made it to an island here. Um, paddled across here to this island. You can see the gear staged, and we're just portaging across this island because that stuff's pretty gnarly, as you can see. So there we are. We're almost to camp. I'm okay. Uh, we did have to pull over. It got a little sketchy there for a minute. Um, there was definitely some survival mode stuff going on, getting to shore, and you know, Justin helping me get my get my gear out of the water. And uh, the water was cold. 
I was having trouble breathing pretty quickly, so it's a real scare. Um, but we got it done, and I'm okay. Change, got dry. It's why we do the things that we do, pack the way that we pack. But the trip continues. We're almost done. All right, bushwhack is over. We're on the water again. It's quite the interesting stretch of river here. Check it out. All kinds of little shoots and bony parts. We bushwhacked through over there to get around it. Uh, some areas are pretty crazy, so we're on the water. I'm told like 20 minutes from camp. Not feeling all that hot from the uh, definitely the confidence shaker there, but we'll be all right. Here we go. All right, folks, this is day four, and hold on. He's very excited. Woo! <laughs> this is day four, and we are at camp finally. Been here for a little bit, getting situated. Saw some of the footage. This view is out of this world. We're here by ourselves. We've been in the remote wilderness of the north woods of Maine. Pretty much by ourselves the entire time so we had a little mishap today and by we i mean me and by mishap i mean almost died and went for a swim <laughs> but we're here incredible view we have camp set up an incredible spot my tent's tucked in over there justin's in the woods over there somewhere in this secret little spot fire's going we've got countertops you name it it's time to eat Considering the day's experiences, some much needed R&R was in order first before making dinner. That night was pretty fantastic. It was one amazing place to spend the evening and unwind before going ahead and packing up the next day. Absolutely going to chef it up tonight. So we got some some more dehydrated sirloin. We're going to throw that in a pan. I might even throw some of this ham in there that I dehydrated. And then we're going to do some Sapporo Ichiban ramen. Yeah, buddy. not look like much but I promise you it will soup base noodles these are freeze dry avocados courtesy of Justin so we're gonna put these bad boys on there. Give it another few seconds. And voila, we're gonna have ourselves a meal. See, I told you guys, look at that. Looks great.
Morning, everybody. Big old pileated woodpeckers in there, waking me up. Um, it's close to 6 a.m. Slept okay. It got real cold last night, down to the 30s, I believe, mid to high 30s. It's always a little chilly. But this morning we got to pack up camp, and we got a few miles to paddle out of here. Hopefully everything goes okay. So let me get up, and get going, and get the day started. See if we can finish this trip without any more mishaps. And people ask me all the time why I do things like this, but this is why. It's my view this morning. All right, camp's all packed up. We're ready to head out of here. So I'll check in with you when we're on the water. It's fairly calm in this cold. We'll see what it's like when we get around the bend. Hopefully, you know, we don't have any, like I said, more mishaps. Fingers crossed. Let's do it. Do it. It was awesome and a hell of a view of Katata. Check this out. Probably can't see it, but she's there and she's pretty. That's a hefty paddle right there. <laughs> We're back at the landing. Unfortunately, that concludes this trip. This has been a five day canoe camping adventure in the Debskeneg Wilderness area in the north woods of Maine. It was a fantastic trip. Uh, all things considered, my swim, all of it. That's just part of the experience. You live and you learn. And watching the video, I mean, it's quite embarrassing. You can catch Justin's video. I'll put a link for his channel in the description and he may include the actual the actual spill. But until then, if you made it this far, I really appreciate you guys watching. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to catch other trips, you know, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so when I post another video and another adventure, which there will be more, you'll get notified and you can watch it. Till then. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.